Our next guest is the acting CEO of the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. Dr. Andrew Muloa is in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to the hot seat of Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you. I think uh, I used to think this is the hot seat. I am now in a hotter seat. <laughs> <laughs> you thought this was hot. Yes. Until I went to Kemsa mm -hmm. and uh, realized that there are hotter seats out there. But how hot is it? You're actually right now not even dealing with Kemsa issues. You're dealing with what you were doing before as a director of medical services. Uh, to be honest, uh, I am dealing with Kemsa. I am dealing with Kemsa and I'm focused on Kemsa and working on transformation of Kemsa. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is I was the director of medical services, preventing and promotive health in the Ministry of Health. I did what I could at the time. And what's coming is questions around some of the actions uh, that I did when I was there. Mm -hmm. Are they my preoccupation? No. My preoccupation is uh, how to turn around Kemsa to be the vibrant organization that is supposed to be, to be the organization that will deliver medicines to the most remote part of the country when required, in the right quantity, in the right, uh, at the right time, and in the right quality. That is my focus. Well so, done. Your communications person is clapping. <laughs> <laughs> he got the brief right. He's executed it very well. Yes. Very well said. <laughs> we'll have the conversations going forward. Wangari Moikia is our guest host today. Wangari is an economist. She's a lead partner with EGCL Institute. She's worked in all those places. Yes. At the National Treasury. Yeah. With the Bretton Woods Institutions. Studied in those big institutions called the big Ivy League institutions. <laughs> mm. and Am now I the guest here? here. I'm, and now she's here. And I'm introducing you to yeah. Dr. Muloa. You know, you know, so that he knows who is asking the questions to him. <laughs> City, please give Dr. Harry the day's problem. Uh, yes. I, I didn't work for the <laughs> <laughs> You didn't study in uh, <laughs> No, I did not. <laughs> in the uh, Ivy League? No, no, no. Oh, no I did not. schools. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I went to a primary school in okay. Kenya. Yeah. Right. The proverb of the day, our proverbs of the whole of this week, Dr. Tari, are from the country of Chad. I have been accused of favoring Chad. And I said in my defense, they have some of the most interesting proverbs I've ever, ever come across. And let me mention today's proverb and tell me what, whether you think it's interesting or not. There is no such thing as a small fire or a small woman. <laughs> I will need to take my time. <laughs> Very advisable. Very advisable. Let's, let's do this. I am a man. Let's, let's, let's make this proverb into two. Let's start with the first half. There is no small fire. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, indeed true. And uh, in our language we, uh, and around here, they say where there is fire, there, there is smoke, there is fire. So, I mean, uh, when. Uh, Issues are said, uh, issues, you start hearing issues, however small they are. Digging deeper may uh, give you what they say, uh, uh, the iceberg. Mm. Uh, and it would be any small issue that you see could be a pointer to big issue, bigger issues. Then uh, again, I will not speak on the, there is no small woman, because I am a man. Hey. Okay. That's another problem. Crickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crickets. Let's start straight into it, Dr. Harry. So you are appointed acting CEO of the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. You tell us what you're doing to transform this cancer and what is the problem that you're going to cure. But right now, you are, every single day, you're either appearing before the National Assembly, before Senate, there's an investigation into what led to the dismissal of your predecessor in the office that you're currently occupying. What is the issue? I, I think uh, the, the, the main issue, as it is, is the issue of uh, the mass net or uh, the uh, long-lasting insecticide nets, which... Uh, were, it's, a, it's a program that uh, the country runs every three years. Uh, the last campaign having been 2020-2021. Then uh, previously, I think 2017 or thereabout, 2014, every three years, mm -hmm. there is a mass distri campaign distribution, mm -hmm. uh, net distribution across 27 counties that are malaria endemic. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it's usually a big program talking about uh, between 15 and 18 million nets uh, per cycle because usually targets every household uh, in these regions is a program that is aligned to one the who uh, malaria eradication strategy uh, is also a program that uh, uh, is aligned to kenyan strategy for malaria el elimination and uh, has really helped in terms of reducing the prevalence of malaria in the country as uh, among other strategies mm -hmm. of course i was here i think the other day the last time we were here we were talking about vaccines the malaria vaccine mm -hmm. uh, being one of them and many other among us the lavicidin and other uh, strategies that are applied in malaria elimination mm -hmm. this year's uh, campaign uh, is supported by two partners uh, the global fund is supporting about 10.2 million nets and uh, the USID uh, PMI project, Presidential Malaria Initiative, is supporting about uh, 4 million uh, nets. Mm. Of course, that just leaves us with a deficit of about uh, 4 million nets, which uh, is at the time that I was a ministry, because our target was to do 18.2 million nets. Mm. So we are uh, still looking for resources to cover the gap. Uh, in terms of uh, this particular project, uh, global fund yeah. procurement uh, the ministry of health and the malaria pro program is a sub recipient of a global fund grant mm -hmm. uh, which supports uh, many activities uh, supporting the counties uh, uh, capacity building uh, training on case management uh, developing tools for policy around malaria mm. so the grant has that component that supports activities within the program mm. then also the grant has a, pro, a, 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 a component that supports commodities in terms of anti-malarial drugs malaria test kits uh, uh, lab support for malaria and also now for this routine for these uh, periodic activities like MassNet, the grant is supposed to was supposed to support uh, initially was 12.6 million nets mm. mm -hmm. but because of price and uh, the available resources uh, could only support 10.2 million nets mm. last year in october we initiated because we have to at the end of uh, at every financial year first we have to develop what we call a, a work plan mm. then from a work plan you develop a procurement plan and based on the global fund budget i think that was done in the beginning of the, fin of the financial year mm. uh, once we got the approval we had to initiate procurement mm. as per procurement plan because these funds the principal recipient of these funds of these grants <coughs> have some flu help with not COVID. All <laughs> <hope> so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Th this re request has to go through the national treasury mm. the national treasury are the principal recipients of the global fund grants and uh, kenya has developed uh, uh specifications for procure for for mass net for for nets for anyone who wants to support a net distribution program you have this policy document that you just go and pick mm. and you are good to go Okay. and make choice uh, of the nets that you want to distribute and this is developed by the ministry the ministry of health mm -hmm. the last uh, version that we have was developed in 2016. okay and this is what we used in october mm -hmm. to write to the principal secretary asking her now to initiate to ask treasury to initiate the procurement okay. of nets okay mm -hmm. uh, the principal uh, that was before during the transition period so it was before the the, the current uh, and previous uh, okay. PSs. Mm -hmm. When that came, uh, I think the PS for uh, not I think the PS on the twelfth of October forwarded the specifications mm. as per the uh, policy document which I already shared uh, to Treasury to procure. Uh, at the time, the request was twelve point six million nets. Mm -hmm. But after a review of the re available resources between Treasury, uh, in consultation with the Ministry and uh, camp, uh, and, and, and Global Fund uh, team in Geneva, uh, we settled on uh, twelve point uh, ten point two million nets. I think after that, as a Ministry, we have already returned to the uh, and 
I was involved because I was the director responsible for this program. Mm -hmm. The program uh, head of program came up with the specification. Of course, forwarded the specifications as per the policy document to me, and I forwarded to the principal secretary. And the principal secretary forwarded. You, you know that channel, mm -hmm. that all bureaucracy, the way, all the way to Kemsa, mm -hmm. all the way to Treasury, then from Treasury to yeah, Kemsa. Okay. Uh, when uh, doctor, just pause for a second. In this structure that you mentioned, the person in charge of programs writes to you. He writes to, to you to, to tell you. you this is what we need. Yes. That somebody who work whose program director <clears throat> in charge of malaria. Malaria prevention. Malaria program. You as director of promotive and preventative, and preventative yeah. you then write to the PS. You scale it up. To the PS, yes. What powers do you have as director beyond writing? Beyond writing, I'm the technical advisor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't just forward any document that comes mm -hmm. to me. Yes. Every document that passes through my desk, I have to look at it, consult. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we have technical advisors within mm -hmm. the office. Mm -hmm. that you, you consult, that, that you have discussions, seek clarification on issues that are not clear. And that, that, that is basically... Do, do you document these processes of discussions with your experts and advisors? Because, uh, one, when I get a written document, uh, because it's, it's now in writing, mm -hmm. I act in writing as well. So if I'm not satisfied with the question, I ask the question, either directly in the memo or develop another memo mm -hmm. to question in writing. Because it's presented in writing you <laughs> respond in writing. if i need a, a discussion mm. i mark it is that Let's why government documents you find a piece of paper yes. there are all sorts of comments yes. on yes. it yes yes mm. yes everyone it goes yes. to write yes. their own little yes. comments yes yes Aha. it's important so it's communicated in writing it's mm. communicated in writing now we can resume okay letter has gone to ps yes PS has PS forwarded has forwarded. PS has forwarded. yes okay treasury do their own uh, consultations with global fund and everything then they write to their procuring agency okay who's procuring agency? their procurement entity is called kemsa treasury's procuring agency it's is KEMSA. called kemsa for okay. global fund all right is so, it okay. treasuries or is it the ministry of health uh, that's what uh, where, where we want to, for purposes of global fund mm -hmm. for purposes of global fund. purposes of global fund yes kemsa is an agent procurement agent for the national treasury okay okay yes and why is the national treasury involved because they are the principal recipient there are three principal re recipient in uh, for global fund in kenya two non-state and one state the state pr principal recipient is the national treasury okay the non-state you have you must have had the kenya red cross yeah and amref yes are the other uh, principal recipients so so the money does not come to treasury all treasury oh, i mean to the ministry of health no all ministry of health money is nestled in the treasury in the treasury okay okay and that's why i first just started by describing their program activities mm. which now the ministry act as a sub-recipient treasury tells you because i cannot implement malaria things i cannot implement mm -hmm. activities on tb i cannot yeah. Yeah. they give the money as a sub-recipient mm. uh, for procurements for these anti-malarial things, they are done by Treasury. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's why Treasury has a unit on Global Fund with technical people, doctors, mm -hmm. sitting in Treasury. Mm -hmm. Because they are the, the, the principal recipient. And they understand. And they need to understand everything mm -hmm. uh, that comes from the ministry. So, in other words, the ministry gives the Treasury unit technical backup. Okay. okay. Now, having understood that foundation, and if we bring it to this current conversation of the global fund and the procurement of these nets in this particular program for prevention, right? Now, there are some acronyms. Wagari, well, help us. What was it again? PD. P PBO. PBO. That was the type of <laughs> <laughs> link to the And then there was the other one, the word. Pyrethrin. Pyre 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 yeah. Pyre Pyre oh, that's from pyrethrum, so it's easy to oh, say that was, Exactly, it's mm. easy. The other one is perinibutane oxide or something. That exactly, yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> mm. Now, <laughs> there was <clears throat> an issue when it came to these nets in according to the global fund mm. right that there were certain standard requirements that they f there was an agreement it was already pre-agreed that in the procure procurement of these nets it was going to be the pri 
can, 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 I, can I cut you short? Yes. Yes. I will cut you short because sometimes we have struggled with that issue mm. of uh, specifications mm. and forgotten the reason why the nets are not being done in Kenya. Okay, so why they are not being uh, manufactured? The, not being the specifications have nothing. So are you saying the two are not related? Because the way in which it has come to us is that the, the two are related, oh, which is what I was trying to establish. Oh, there is an order. The, the reason why this tender was cancelled, mm -hmm. Global Fund said, uh, cancel, was because of inconsistencies in pro in the processing of the tender, which is the tender evaluation. Okay, had nothing to do with the specifications. Mm. So why has that Be come up? Y you see, and I'll tell you. I'll give you the chronology. Okay. So uh, okay. I don't know how long I have. Please go ahead. The reason why this tender was cancelled, Ed. PBO and no PBO not been there because once we gave this generic document, which is the policy document, which says if you want to buy nets for Kenya, mm -hmm. you can buy. And I, I, I think I carry the document which carries all these things. Mm. You can buy. There are so many specifications in terms of the fiber. You can buy poly, polyester or polyethylene. Mm. Uh, in terms of the shape, you can buy rectangular or conical. There are choices. In terms of color, you can buy uh, blue or uh, green, light blue, white mm. or light green. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, uh, <coughs> the, the, the active the, the, ingredient, the, the active ingredient for technology for 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 more inside or technology mm. you can buy pyrethrin or pbo, PBO. Mm. so once uh, any founder is given these specifications they choose what they can buy okay in this case between national treasury and kemsa who are developing the tender document remember the ministry is not in this yeah between kemsa and the uh, and, and the national, national treasury and, 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 global, and fund, global fund they agreed that we will go With for pyrethrin, pyrethrin mm -hmm. okay. not PBO. Mm -hmm. We will go for rectangular mm -hmm. and not uh, conical. Which is okay. We will go for, for light blue, mm. uh, uh, light, light blue, and, and not, not white or mm. green. Oh. So those are now conversations between the procuring agency, agency which prepares the tender, right, and the national treasury and the global fund. And this is what happens all the time. And this is what happens. If I, I, if you look at the specifications mm. that were used, were sent to, and I have them mm. here, mm. which were sent to National Treasury again in 2020, word for word. Was same, like, same. Same, same, word for mm. word. The difference is uh, this one is signed by Dr. Uh, Wako, uh, who was the head of malaria program then and this one is signed by dr omar who was the head of malaria pro they, they, word for word because right. these are police documents but now the same document is given to other because i always said there are other players mm. or funders mm. who support uh, so usaid uh, are given the same same, same document mm. and like in the last campaign usaid chose the pbo because why pbo has longer lasting insecticidal uh, effect okay. and and therefore it uh, it's in terms of malaria uh, ma uh, mosquito repellency it takes it's longer higher. okay so and in the last campaign global fund chose chose the same pyrethrin pyrethrin yes so global fund in 2020 chose pyrethrin and in, 20, in 2022 chose, in 2022 they chose mm. pyrethrin so, so my understanding again. even from reading the thing um if, if you said you know it's it's a issue between the global fund treasury and kemsa but from what i understand i think I, I think it was someone in the ministry i forget who it was then looked at the tender and said no it's not correct we need to change Th that's why we to have this. to go with a chronology yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so i'm trying to understand because you yes. said it's only those three so where did so where at, does the ministry the of point, health come in mm -hmm. this conversation is happening there is no tender that's being floated these mm -hmm. are technical conversations that mm -hmm. are happening preparing for the tender okay once global fund because the global fund reviewed the and some of the information i call it privileged information because i'm in kemsa mm. uh, after the uh, global fund reviewed the the the, the, the specifications then they settled on this and they the kemsa developed a tender document was reviewed by global fund and global fund said okay we are okay to go we are okay to go and the spec the spec here was the specification now is by mm -hmm. and light blue and light blue and, and rectangular. rectangular and all those things okay and these are doctors in treasury who have decided so we are clear with yes. technical competency yes it's good. yes yes okay and now mm. after that a tender is advertised in the newspapers a tender can't be advertised until this agreement is arrived at. no 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 mm. okay is advertised all right specs everything is put up in the newspapers and in the website 
bidders that apply no more procurement process uh, bidder pre, uh, pre mm. uh, was it a pre, pre qualified something list. conference mm -hmm. that they no they they there is a con conference that, that you call the prospective yeah. bidders okay. to come and, and ask, ask questions, questions yeah. and yeah. all those things yeah. Yeah. happen then come on the 20 20th the tender is supposed to close i think on the 23rd mm. of february or thereabout maybe 20 second i cannot remember very well i do not have the fine details but around that day the the head of malaria program comes to me and tells me daktari we the tender that was advertised does not have uh, a specification that we had put in the in the in in in, the, in our initial you know. Uh, request him from a technical point he thought we need to advertise both pbo and, and pirate pirate ring. so that whichever is cheaper mm. carries the day carries the day right so i tell him Dr. first this was my first mass net so i i have not done this before so mm. i told him okay and you are convinced this is okay he tells me it's okay then i tell him then you have explained to me your issue go put it in writing uh, bring it to me i process it uh, so that i escalate it or otherwise yeah uh, to the ps that is the tender is supposed to close in two days mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i he never comes back to me i don't see any communication from him then the following day i think on the 22nd or thereabout in the newspapers the tender has been extended to, uh, to accommodate consultation or to address issues that have been raised by the PS. I have to say that these are the same fairly, issues fairly that Dr. told government. me about. Okay. The next day. That was high efficiency, I must say. So, <laughs> Very fast. For so, so, did you receive the memo that you requested for? No. <coughs> In fact, to be honest, I only saw that memo uh, two weeks ago. Can I ask why you asked for it to be put in writing and requested a memo? Because, because that's how government works. Mm -hmm. That uh, we come, we have our discussions, our niceties, you tell me your opinion, you go put it in writing. Mm -hmm. So that I act on it in writing. Okay. Because any other thing, what is not documented, is it doesn't, doesn't exist. Happen. Doesn't exist. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. So I asked him to do it in writing and he did it in writing. And unfortunately I never saw it. And somehow the PS saw it and acted on it. And wrote to Kemsa, and within uh, two days, Kemsa had already extended the time. And what's the procedure? The procedure should pass through you. N not directly, even. He should write to his immediate supervisor, who is the head of department. Mm, then the head of writing. department writes to me. And that didn't happen? Didn't happen. Okay. okay. So, uh, whether it was deliberate, I don't know. Okay. Whether it was a uh, oversight? A an oversight, I don't know. Were I you, don't want to imagine. Were you in the office that day, too? I was in the office. So then and that even when I'm not in the you. office, mm. okay. usually there is someone acting in the office. Okay. And uh, they have mandate to review documents, uh, sign documents. and uh, Was the memo addressed to you? The memo was addressed to me. It's to your attention? Yes. To the attention of yes. the Director yes. of, of Medical, Medical Services for Preventive and Promotive Health. Health. And uh, the memo... It's copied to? It, it was not copied to anyone. It so was it's straight to me. Only to, to you. Me. But True. you never saw it. It is here. It's to me mm -hmm. through the head of uh, National Strategic mm -hmm. Public Health Program mm -hmm. from the head of malaria, head of malaria program. That's, that's also very interesting because in the way government processes, if, if it reaches the, a higher officer and the officer sees that the person who it should go through hasn't signed, yeah. they will send it back and say this that, person is that, That's why I said I don't want to imagine mm. uh, because there are many things that are happening out there. Mm. Uh, and if okay. it's not in your attention... So it now, in your so now explain to us before we take the break, or let's take a break. Then yes. you can come and now take us through those exten the extension, and then what happened thereafter. Okay. okay. And where Dawai Livunjika. Dr. Andrew Mulua is the acting CEO at the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. Prior to this, he was the director of medical services in charge of promotive and preventive care at the Ministry of Health. He's here explaining to us what has happened in this whole kerfuffle with the KEMSA and Global Fund and why he is having to answer so many tough questions before parliamentary investigating committees. Keep it here for more. This is Kenya's biggest conversation live on Spice FM on KTN Home and online. Memo 
does not get to your office it goes to and the And I don't know that it exists. And you have no I, knowledge yeah, of its existence. Exists. Yeah. But then the PS takes some action. And I don't know that she has taken action. And you action. have not heard of it. Yes. Okay. So what I action only was see this? it in newspapers. <laughs> I only see newspapers extending the tenure. And how do I learn about it? I learn about it uh, from uh, Treasury asking why are you extending tenure because they know I'm the technical advisor. And uh, Global Fund asking why, what is this? that I have no idea of. Mm. Then I learn that, uh, yeah, there's, there was a communication from the ministry okay. uh, that uh, there were some missing specifications in, as advertised by KEMSA. Right. Then, uh, then the tender is extended, was it 14 days, I guess? Mm -hmm. Then uh, within that period, we have engagements with Treasury Global Fund. And I write another memo I ask, we, we have write another memo asking the PS uh, to affirm the specifications as advertised by KEMSA. Mm. And we forward that. Uh, I have not seen the action, whether it was acted on or not, uh, that uh, last memo that we did. Uh, but we did and forwarded the PS. So, and it's a, it's, a P, it's a prerogative of the PS to act just like anything coming from my juniors I have prerogative to make a decision mm. how to act on it neutral, no decision uh, reject, accept review, uh, you can do all sorts of things, mm. sometimes just, uh, call someone for discussion and, and all that, so I do not get any feedback on it so tender is closed uh, then Evaluations and I think around the same time I also send uh, nominate uh, through on advice from the program mm -hmm. technical officers to participate in the tender evaluation mm -hmm. because uh, the ministry uh, is the technical uh, part so we have to give people who understand uh, we give someone who understands uh, uh, HPTs mm -hmm. we give someone who understands entomology uh, disease and all those things mm -hmm. so people who have. Uh, 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 and a background mm. in, 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 in the sector. So we give uh, those ones and uh, the, the PS forwards. Same, of course, adds uh, an, an, an other persons. Adds right. For opening, adds a, an administrator. And for evaluations, adds a finance officer, mm. chief finance officer. So uh, that is the prerogative of the PS. Right. Because I propose the names. Mm. She can, she or she can take in all of them or remove all of them and nominate new, uh, uh, new people. That's, that's, mm -hmm. the, uh, that's the job of the PS. That's, that's the job of the PS. Mm. Uh, so, and evaluation is done. Evaluation is complete. Uh, Pre-award review. Because usually all global fund procurements uh, have to go through pre-award review. After you do the procurement, you, uh, documents are sent to global fund for them to review and see. And this is a... Uh, is, is, is a risk management uh, uh, st step mm. so that rather than come at the end and say the procurement of these nets was uh, in, um, in, uh, improper, improper and therefore the country has to uh, because if mm. there is uh, inappropriate uh, uh, of global fund funds or ineligible expenditures uh, lead to refund mm. rather than come back and say Kenya refund this money uh, because the procurement that you did on the net uh, was bankrupt or didn't, uh, had problems uh, they review mm. so that they tell you okay we have reviewed at the process it's okay continue mm. we have reviewed at the process you need to work on one two three mm. we have reviewed the process sometimes they say a lot of times actually they say go ahead mm. and uh, award to the to the winning bidders as, as proposed mm. Then uh, they give a, a report. What are their findings? One, they find there is inconsistencies in uh, in evaluation criteria. Mm -hmm. That out of the, I think the seventeen bids, uh, some bids the bidders had not uh, paginated or which is, which is mm -hmm. consistently paginated uh, their document because what which was a requirement mm -hmm. before technical evaluation. Then some bids that. Had won, mm. had not done. So bids, some bidders were thrown out on account of no pagination. Pagination. But some uh, some bidder who had not paginated as well proceeds. Well, proceeded to the next stage. To the next stage. And so that the same an inconsistency. Okay. Then the other inconsistency is uh, 
bidders were supposed to have letters of authorization from manufacturers. But one bidder, who was a manufacturer themselves, was told that they have not attached <laughs> letter of authorization, letter of authorization from, from themselves. From themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, uh, number three, mm. one, because the bidders were also supposed to give samples. One bidder brings a sample from a company in Holland. Mm -hmm. But the letter of authorization is from a company in Dubai, mm -hmm. which are not related. Oh okay. And uh, apparently they proceeded. And these ones have proceeded to. When you say they're not related, what does that mean? I mean, uh, you know, when you are tendering, mm. and you, well, the reason you get letter of authorization from manufacturer is that manufacturer commits that they will man make this product for you for that tender. Mm. Uh, uh, with those specifications. With those specifications. Yes. So when you go to uh, your BD to deliver softer, mm. then you deliver cock, for mm. example. Mm. A bit of a and problem. you have a letter of authorization from softer. But the sample is from Coca-Cola. Yeah. There is a problem. It's a problem. But when you say it's passing, it's from the technical, the procurement committee that was the appointed. The technical evaluation Those committee. Those are the people yes. who have evaluated, yes, evaluated and passed. Yes. Okay. So Global Fund says, here we have found inconsistencies. And for that reason, you cannot proceed. Mm. So this tender should be redone. Under normal circumstances, it should be redone. But Global Fund, because this current grant is running from 2021 July to 2024 uh, uh, July, mm -hmm. June 30th. Mm -hmm. After that, it closes and funds are not available. Mm -hmm. This must net has to be done in this financial year. If we are to repeat the same process, it would cross over. It would, it would mean the nets are earliest year in December or January. Mm -hmm. Then to distribute nets in 27 counties would mean spillover. Uh, to the next financial, which would mean Kenya would have lost the, the money and mm. opportunity. So they advise, uh, in the interest of time, let's use Wamba. Let's get somebody else. Let's get somebody else because they have their own program. And Kenya is among the only four counties, four countries rather. Mm. I've worked in the counties a lot longer. Uh, four countries that have been given the opportunity to procure for mm. themselves the nets. Mm. Okay. Uh, so these Wamba guys uh, who, they, are, yeah, they who are, are then selected, yeah. do they advertise for tenders? They have, uh, they, they are a global fund uh, procuring agency. Just like Kemsa. Just like Kemsa. Mm. Right. And they have pre-qualifications. They have uh, people, bidders who already have priced mm. right. their products. Mm. So them, they just call down. Mm. So if it's net, global fund will do a call down and say, uh, because they already have their prices mm. already. So they did not, when they were selected, they did not go through a bidding process, a mm. procurement process. The, 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 the Wambo. Yeah. The, their procurement process is done in the background so they have so maybe they're like, they're like frameworks mm. okay. i would say they are mm. frameworks with the manufacturers mm. and okay yeah they or were probably able to approved deploy every year or something. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. i've got a question here mm. now according to executive order number one of 2023 the organization of the ministry of health has two state departments the state department for medical services the state department for public health and professional standards <laughs> You, as the director of medical services, you are under a, a director of preventive and promotive health services. You are under the State Department for Public Health and Professional Standards. No. Is that not so? L let me tell you. The most difficult assignment that I ever did in my life was mm. between uh, December and April. Because what? I was reporting to two PSCs. Some of my functions mm. were on medical mm. services and other functions... Wow, wow, in on, preventive. Uh, preventive mm -hmm. well, and oh, wow, on uh, public health and mm -hmm. professional standards. Mm -hmm. So I was reporting to two PSs. Having two bosses, two instructions, you're supposed to be here, so, uh, it was not easy for so me. So you were under two state departments? Yes, I was across because the, how the functions, my functions were organized, mm -hmm. I had the National Strategic Public Health pro Programs, HIV, TB, Malaria, Immunization. Uh, TB and malaria were in public health. Mm -hmm. HIV and and immunization were in medical, under medical services. Reproductive health, uh, the not what we used to call family health mm. uh, department, had uh, reproductive, maternal, uh, childhood, reproductive health, neonatal, adolescent, all those were in medical services. Mm -hmm. But there was nutrition also, which was also in public health. I also had another department uh, uh, of NCD, 
uh, which I think NCD was purely under under medical services, except some tussle on the tobacco control, mm. which was uh, crossing over the other side. Mm. Then I also had a, a community a department of uh, primary, primary health care uh, services, okay. which had uh, community health services on one side and uh, primary health care on the other side. So, reporting so in this particular matter then of Global Fund, at the initial stages when you were working on the work plan and the development plan, and forwarding them to the PS so that the PS that time forwards. was one PS was before it was before, before this, this organization to uh, state departments at this stage when the head of malaria control is coming to you and you advise him to send you malaria is under public health and under ma so which PS acted on uh, the PS uh, public health and for public health in fact for for purposes of programs because programs work uh, with 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 the line PS for malaria was public health. Even though Kemsa as an organization is under is under medical, medical services, services. Mm -hmm. for purposes of this, the PS medical services was not in the picture because okay. Kemsa malaria is doing health, yeah. agency work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's doing agency work. He's okay. not doing policy or, or, or professional work. He's oh, doing and agency, agency work. work falls under uh, well, public. under public, public, public health. health. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So the PS was all right. Yes. In taking the action, yes, assuming that it had followed the chain, yes, basically forwarding this to the Kemsa boss was under the PSS purview. Then. Yes, yes, even uh, advising who the members of the technical evaluation committee would be mm -hmm. forwarded from the ministry. It's still okay. It's still okay for it's the PS okay. then yes. to do that. Yes. So there's nothing wrong about you know she did not no. overreach into the no, mandate no, no, of no, the no, state no, department no, for health no. because uh, for example. Uh, Kemsa serves other organizations. Kemsa mm -hmm. serves uh, Kemsa, not Kemsa, uh, Amref. Mm -hmm. Kemsa serves Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Kemsa serves National Treasury. Kemsa serves KNH. Kemsa serves many other mm -hmm. So Kemsa is the doing counties. agency work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So uh, sometimes uh, KNH or Kenyatta University Teacher and Referral Hospital will write to Kemsa mm -hmm. and tell Kemsa, procure for us. This theater equipment okay in your understanding dr Terry, why then would this committee that you sat before last week place the blame of the loss of this tender squarely at your feet did they yes they did i thought they there was were a quote in the paper and they said that you are the reason why kenya then has lost this tender i thought what they were asking our questions mm. They haven't done a report yet. They are asking questions. Okay, so why Just would like, they ask like, that? Why would they not blame you then for because, the loss of this because tender? Because they want to get it to understand with clarity. Just like you're asking me questions mm. here. Mm -hmm. You would not understand. If you don't ask the questions, you would not under, uh, uh, have an in-depth understanding of the mm. issues. So, I, and I, I feel and I appreciate mm. the, uh, both uh, the National Assembly and the Parliamentary Committee. Mm. Because this gives an opportunity for Kenyans to know the truth. Sure. And you see, uh, and even here, and I'm not trying to play innocent or to justify innocence on anyone. Mm. I'm just stating facts as they are. So that now, as I, as after I share the information that I have, mm. it's upon the committee to look at the information that they have gotten from me, the evidences that I've supplied them, and make a decision. The fact is, uh, the, the committees are doing their work. And that is what oversight is all about. And uh, there's a difference, by the way, mm. between uh, committee work, because like uh, last week, I think we sat on the committee for about three hours. Mm. Uh, the, the news will report for five minutes. Mm. So you can't <laughs> capture what was spoken mm. in two hours and five mm. minutes. <laughs> uh, papers, you can't capture what has been... Uh, can't capture the spirit of what was happening. Yes. There. Uh, so... And the, the hard questions have to be asked. Mm -hmm. And we must have answers for them. And whoever is capable should take the, 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 the responsibility. Then can I ask you, Dr. Terry, what would have been your response? Because all of this, I mean, you say that it doesn't have anything to do with said memo or who, what specifications, because those were already arranged. What would have been your response had the memo that you requested to be put in writing, had that actually come to your desk how would this have changed the flow of things from what we see today first two things would have happened mm. i would have consulted 
the National Treasury because I knew they were processing. I would have called Kemsa and asked them what is the basis of your act of, of this tender? Why did you have this removed? I would have called the Global Fund because we are in touch with the Global Fund uh, in Geneva. So in other words, first thing is consult. Then form an opinion and advise appropriately. So, I mean, that is, and in my course of duty, there are so many things that come to my de that have come to my desk, and after consulting the relevant organs or mm. organizations, I advise the officers. This opinion, this advice that you have given me is irrelevant in this context. Mm -hmm. a, this advice mm -hmm. uh, cannot be taken in because of ABCD. So it is through, and that's why I think uh, managers are in office. You are in office to make sure that you have you, and that's why government is layered so that the technical person may have this persuasion. This is not, then when the, you, it comes to you, you mm -hmm. do the mm -hmm. wide sector level consultations. Then you are guided and you take action. And you take action. Mm -hmm. Now you are the CEO at Kemsa. Supposing a similar instruction comes to you from the principal secretary, what would you do? I think if I were the CEO, you then. You are. No, okay, no, then. Then. <laughs> on this particular okay. matter. Mm -hmm. Before extension, mm. I would have consulted with the Global Fund okay. and uh, Treasury, which she did in writing, mm -hmm. but sometimes a call away. I have received this instruction, mm -hmm. and uh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, because you know the process, you, what has up. Then, because when she wrote, after three days, w after the extension had already been done, mm. she already, uh, was it actually after three days mm. or two days? Mm. She already had an answer, which said Global Fund have already committed to the specs. Mm. Sure. So if she had consulted, uh, telephone now, and we know, this pe we know all these people. We have their contact. You know the Global Fund coordinator in the National Treasury. Right. Call him, ask him, I have received this letter from the PS. Mm. What should I do? Mm. That's what I would have done. Mm -hmm. Just a call. I've received this. So this particular time, you are the CEO at yes. Kemsa. All right. And there's a possibility of such instructions coming from the ministry coming to your desk. It, and they are time bound. Because I look this at... This is an instruction coming from your boss, <laughs> the principal secretary in the Ministry of Health. Are you going to say, no, 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 I have got to ask other people before I act on the instructions for my superiors? If I look at the... The, the, the letter that the PS wrote. The writer had asked for rectification of an error. So, th two things. Is there an error? That's the first thing. Before you, you worked, you have to establish whether there is an error. Right. So, if that's the first thing that you need to do, establish, I would establish, is there an error? If there is no error, I write to the PS and, tell, uh, and inform her that uh, I have reviewed, consulted, and I found that they, it is not an error. It was deliberate and designed to be advertised that way. So there is nothing missing as far our advert. Finish. Okay. The other question that we asked the, your board chairman who was here three weeks ago, was it two weeks ago? Mm -hmm. So you are not an appointee of the board as Dr. Andrew Mulo. Uh, do you report to the board? I report to the board. Or do you report to another to your appointing authority who's not the board? Let me tell you. <laughs> Government is a funny animal. I am an employee of the board. From the 16th, 17th rather, of is May. That a, is that a transfer of services? Uh, th 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 Can you go back to the ministry? If my tenure is done, but for the time being, mm. I have an appointment from the board. And so who pays your salary? Kepsa. Mm. Okay, so if I applied for a job at... Who signed your appointment letter? Mm. Chair of the board. Mm. But you were appointed on the same day? No. Th you know, that is... Uh, <laughs> my, my appointment <laughs> had to be regularized oh. by the board. Because, you know, there is the strict... Kemsa is a semi-autonomous government agency. Mm. Uh, my name was... Uh, was was proposed Pub publicly announced announced mm. but the board had to sit down and make the decision over it okay. over mm. it mm. deliberate and give me a minute then give me an appointment letter so i am acting on appointment of the board maybe the proposition who proposed my name is a question but that's how government works Can that uh, mm. there is a bureaucracy uh, sometimes looks straightforward but is not as straightforward
Can I ask a follow-up question that uh, is bothering me, but uh, it, it, I just need to understand. If the challenge around the procurement was the evaluation, and the evaluation was done by the, these people who are selected, but you selected the, these people, so how, do you, how does that play in, into to your responsibility because these people who mis-evaluated are your, the people you proposed? I mean, people take responsibility for their own actions. I did not, I was not part I was not part the, I did not even know when they did the evaluation, where they were seated, who they were with. Uh, so, and they are technical people. So that one, they take individual responsibility mm -hmm. on that because uh, being nominated, I am the CEO for KEMSA. When I do something wrong, I take personal responsibility. Mm. So it is, and I'm not saying they did something wrong. Whatever they did, mm. they, they, they took, they have to mm. take personal responsibility. It doesn't matter because I would have nominated any other person. Mm. I, I nominated them on the strength of their technical capacity. You knew them from before, if they've done this work before. I, I nominated them on the account of their technical capacity. Mm. A procurement person, an entomologist, and uh, an HPT specialist. So I was basing my... We've been placed there by the Public Service yes. Commission, which has evaluated... Um, yes. There. Okay. okay. <laughs> Dr. Mulwa, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. It's not been a hot seat. So you'll come now, we talk about KEMSA. N and and that is day. actually what I thought I'm coming to talk <laughs> about. Yes. Uh, I'm surprised <laughs> I've spent all this time talking about... But it's very and enlightening. And, and, it's and, important. And, yes. Mm. But so you'll uh, come and tell us what you're doing with KEMSA. We have to fix KEMSA because KEMSA... Mm -hmm. is important for the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. It is. Dr. Andrew Muloa, Acting CEO, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. Keep it here for more. 9 a.m.